Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today, I needed chicken stock, so I took out a chicken. Um, but then I decided that I was going to roast the chicken. And I found a recipe in a book, so we'd go ahead and roast the chicken. But it also needs chicken stock. So we're not going to use the chicken stock from this book because we haven't made that yet. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it with the carcass, which is something you can do even though the recipe calls for more raw chicken. Anyway, Today we're going to be making Claire's Roast Chicken from Teresa Carl Sanders' first Outlander Kitchen cookbook. So I have my chicken. It's mostly defrosted. It's been out of the refrigerator for over an hour now. She says take it out an hour before you cook it, but mine was not super uh, defrosted anyway, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, it's a very basic roast chicken, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to truss it the way that she describes, because I've never done it that way before, but we'll see. Um, so it's a chicken. It's supposed to be a three and a half to four pound chicken. It looks a little bit larger than that to me. I didn't weigh it, and it didn't have, um, I think I bought it in like a two pack, and they didn't have individual weights on them, so. And I bought it a while back, so who knows. Uh, I took all of the stuff out of the inside. I saved the neck for future chicken stock, which I will make eventually, I swear. Um, and I patted it dry inside and out as much as I could, but especially since it's still a little frozen, there's it's going to be damp inside, but it is whatever it is. I've got my roasting pan and a rack that almost fits in my roasting pan. It's fine. I really need to get a new rack for when I want to do this. But whatever. Um, actually, I think maybe I could, if I turn it this way, then it's not flat. And I can, but it does fit. Uh, it doesn't have to be, I'm going to turn the chicken, don't worry. And so we're going to, well, before I touch the chicken, not that it really matters because I'm going to be touching this and touch, touching the chicken all the time. Um, I've got some kosher salt and some black pepper uh, measured as per the recipe. And I am just going to mix it together. And now I'm going to get my hands dirty and put this all over the outside and the inside of my chicken. So, and I'm going to turn the chicken so it is the right way. And I'm going to use all of this salt and pepper so I'm not concerned about contamination. There we go. Hmm. I hope that's all the stuff out of the inside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some on the bottom. This was labeled as a young roaster. This is finding, apparently, a little cut I have on my finger. That's great. That I didn't even remember. But oh well. I'm just going to dump the rest of this in the inside. And also in the inside, I'm going to put some fresh rosemary sprigs. I'm just going to stuff those inside. Um, some garlic cloves that I smashed. And just a quarter of a lemon. So that will help to season uh, the chicken. And now we're going to tuck these back up under that will help keep this part from burning uh, 
there we go. And we're supposed to cross the legs and tuck them through a little slit in the skin on the opposite side that we're going to make with just a little paring knife. And I've never done this particular method before, but actually, honestly, I really prefer to spatchcock my chicken because it cooks so much faster, but this is a more beautiful presentation. So, all right, so we're gonna try to get this end through there. Hopefully not making it so big that it doesn't. There we go. Then got to find my hole on the other side, which I see that part, but not the hole. There we go. And then, oh, that's not great. That part worked out okay, but this part is not working out okay because I tore it. Don't know. Don't know if I can make another hole and make it work or if it will just tear again. I'm gonna have to be careful. If not, I'm gonna leave it like it is. Yeah, this is gonna tear again, pretty sure. Trying real hard not to. Okay, that's the best I can do with this method. All right, I'm just going to put as much of this on top as I can. And I'm going to wash my hands because I do have to open um, my thermometer. Okay, so this recipe does call for using a probe thermometer. Um, and I'm going to set the temperature... Uh, the upper alarm to 175 and the alarm is on there we go and now um, I'm going to uh, put this in let's see I think she says the thigh. I swear the recipe said to use this, but I can't find it right now. But we are going to uh, roast this until the internal temperature reaches 175 degrees. And I'm going to put this in the thigh um, because we like our thigh meat up to 175, but we like the breast up to maybe like 165. So, um, Trying to get it into the a meaty portion of the thigh and not the bone. There we go. So now I'm going to just plug this in to make sure I think it's in the right place. It should be right around freezing. Yes, it is 31.6 degrees currently. Um, my oven is at 475 and she says to put it in the lower third of the oven. My racks are, in this oven, my rack is not super movable. It's got like a pull out rack. Um, so it's going a little bit lower than the middle. Maybe that's the lower third, I don't know, but that's where it's going. Uh, and we're gonna roast this for 30 minutes and then we're going to rotate the pan. So we will show you what this looks like in 30 minutes when we rotate the pan. And then we're just going to continue cooking it at that temperature until it hits 175 and this goes beep, beep, beep.
and then it'll be done. My chicken is still sizzling, came out of the oven just a minute ago. It now says it's 177. Uh, I'm going to quickly check the breast just to be sure in case I got it in a weird spot in the thigh, but it looks done. It's a little extra black right here, but other than that, it looks pretty good, I think. Um, I've got an instant read that I'm going to just put into the breast. Which, well, I'm glad I did. Because that is not done. So my the middle of my breast is about 116, so we are nowhere near done. But uh, it's probably because my some of my chicken was pretty frozen. Um, I wonder about... Yeah, the thigh is registering... Hmm. 148 there. Well, I can't feed this to my family as it is. So, but it's also very, very brown. I'm going to turn the oven down, the same oven that I was using before, down to... Um, because I've got two ovens, sorry, that's why I mean the same oven, down to about 350. And I'm going to check it with the instant read it in the breast again in about 15 minutes, just to see how that's going. Um, and I might try to move this to the, to a different spot over here where I was, Ooh, that is, At least it's lower. Eh, maybe I'll just move it to the breast where I had it. Um, and we will, yeah, I'm going to move this into the breast area where I had the other thermometer, which we use all the time. Um, and yeah, it's going down and down and down. And I will, I'm going to go until the breast says it's at least 160 because it will carry over cooking to at least 165. Um, excuse me while I move out of frame. I'm just trying to... Oh, that's... What is up with that? That's... It's, it's, it's registering a lot higher. I'm trying to do this left-handed um, than I would have expected, given what the other one said. Okay, that one's better. Now it's going down further. Okay. It's important to cook your chicken correctly, otherwise you will get sick. All right, back in the oven this goes, and um, yeah, we'll see you in, I don't know, 15 minutes, or we'll let you know how long it takes. All right, so now it's been in the oven for approximately another half an hour, maybe 35 minutes, and it says, that just says 175. I also turned the oven down to 350. It wouldn't have been 350 immediately, but it means it wasn't staying at 475. That says 177. That's great. Um, this says it's at 161 currently. Just a little curious as to... Yeah, that says 169, 168. All right, perfectly safe. That's great. So our chicken is done at this point. Um, and it's very hot. I am going to move this. I'm going to try to drain all of the juices out of the inside without getting the very hot ones on my hand. There we go. Smells a little lemony. So that's all in the pan. I'm going to take the rack out because I don't need that anymore. And 
there's not a whole lot of juices in here, but we're supposed to strain these. I don't know exactly if it's worth it to use this, but I'm going to, and we're supposed to leave about, um, you know, there's just so little juice in here. I feel like that's probably not more than a tablespoon of fat. We're supposed to leave about a tablespoon of the fat. It's not that much more than that um, in here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just, I'm not going to use this right now. I'm going to just dump this into my saucier. Um, which is where I'm going to make a pan sauce. And we're supposed to use a brown chicken stock or I think it's called hot broth at Leoch, um, which I don't have, but let me put this on the stove for right now. This is not in the recipe. This is me going off of my own experience. And because I have, I thought I had some home canned chicken stock and I don't, um, but I do have some better than bouillon that I've reconstituted. Uh, but I'm going to use this to sort of gather up some of the lovely brownness that's in there since I don't have that in my stock and I'm going to just stir that up and then I'm going to strain this with the fat separator that also has a strainer thing on top if you want to you could put this onto your stove and boil it and it will help you get all of these bits but I'm not going to worry about that honestly I'm just trying to get a little more flavor since I don't have that very flavorful homemade stock and we have it in the pan anyway so why not there we go and that has turned our yellow chicken stock or chicken broth that we got from a jar into a nice brown broth. There we go. So now I'm just going to pour this through the strainer, strainer on the top of my let me move that where you might be able to see it. Over here, I'm going to pour this through here. So I can catch all of those little protein bits that I stirred up. And then I'm just going to pour this back into the other measuring cup so that I have that. There's, yeah, there's not a whole lot more fat left in there. You can let it sit for a little bit longer if you really want to. And you could strain this a little bit better if you really want to with like a, a sieve. But I don't really care at this point. So um, there we have a more brown stock. Now we have to go over to the stove and make our pan sauce. I also want to say I was supposed to tent that to keep it warm, but I don't like tenting it because it tends to make the skin not great. Anyway, so we've got our saucier here, and I'm going to bring the juices, which there aren't a whole lot of, up to a boil. And now I'm going to add some flour, just some all-purpose flour. I'm going to turn it back down to medium. We're going to cook this as it is. I've got my heat on medium now for two minutes just to cook out the raw flour taste. This is 
basically making a little bit of a roux with those drippings and the fat from the chicken. So it's been two minutes and now I'm going to add this and whisk. I'm adding it sort of a little bit at a time just so I can get the lumps whisked out. I also have some flour kind of stuck to the bottom, but all right, I don't like all those little bits. There we go. So now we just have to boil this for a few minutes until it is, uh, until it coats the back of a spoon, until it's about, you know, whatever thickness you prefer. And season with salt and pepper. Taste it, season it as you, you like. But yeah, that's basically our pan sauce. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Um, and, and then you serve it. On top of your chicken which she does not give you any particular uh, method for carving so I'm just gonna do it how I usually do it um, and we'll show you what it looks like and let you know what we think in just a minute on this episode of cooking the books with Heather you watched me make Claire's roast chicken from Teresa Carl Sanders first Outlander kitchen cookbook um, and this was an interesting recipe because it cooks at a very, very high heat. And I don't think I'll be cooking it that way again. Uh, it ended up with the breast or at least the sort of the outside being pretty dry, pretty well cooked by the time the inside was cooked appropriately. So... I don't think I'll be cooking it that way again. I think the flavorings were great. The method, other than the temperature, was pretty good. I think that temperature might work better for a spatchcocked chicken where it's sort of laid flat because then the outside wouldn't cook quite as long before by the time the inside is cooked because it sort of flattens it out, doesn't take as long to cook when you spatchcock it. So, uh, I'm not sure I would do it this way again. I did use the carcass for some chicken stock, although I did not film it and did not make the brown chicken stock that's in the book, but I do plan to do that at some point. I'm gathering all my scraps of, of chicken and from when I do spatchcock chickens and um, take out bones or anything like that. I, I keep that in the freezer. So when I've got enough, we'll make that. So. Uh, if you've enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and come back and watch me make something else next week. Mm -hmm.